Welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. is one of the most talented, aggressive, and technically efficient boxers today. Spence possesses endurance, speed, intelligence, and a near unhealthy obsession with destroying an opponent's liver. It's been said many times that the art of boxing can be boiled down to hitting without being hit. There have been countless methods developed over the years to accomplish this, but perhaps the most artful is to use superior positions. Placing yourself in such a way that denies your opponents even the possibility of touching you. And very few fighters can execute this tactic quite so well as Spence, who always manages to find the perfect positions to land his tight combinations and devastating body shots. He does this through subtle footwork, aggressive wrestling, and deceptive guard manipulation. To outmaneuver his opponents, Spence uses many of the same traditional open stance tricks that Pernell Whitaker used. Like Whitaker, Spence can use fancy footwork to move to the outside, but he often prefers to move to the inside, the exact opposite of most southpaws. From a defensive standpoint, Spence will fade back to the inside to catch or cover block, stifling his opponent's offense. This works surprisingly well, as it misaligns his competitors' punches, putting them in an inferior position to hit with any real power. But more importantly, it goads opponents into chasing Spence so that he could lead them into harder power punches. As an opponent widens their step to try and cut Spence off, they create a lot more openings for him to target. This is especially true if they come in with rear hand attacks, as this squares their upper body up even more. It's a well-known concept that stepping or pivoting inside can put a southpaw at risk for a cross. This is why fighters with opposite feet forward usually try so hard to take the outside foot position. Spence does this as well, usually after he's worn down an opponent and believes it's time to finish the fight. But, as we covered in the Pac-Man video, the inside position actually has the advantage of lining up a fighter's jab, assuring it will land first. And Spence uses the same principle in a different way. Spence will step or pivot inside as he jabs in order to draw a punch on purpose so that he could counter it. This works so well because Spence has already placed his rear hand closer to his opponent. In fact, simply stepping, pivoting, or even leaning inside will oftentimes trigger Spence's opponents to try and throw a punch. This is because Spence has essentially created the superior position for them, but this is all part of Spence's plan. While the regular inside position is inferior for direct power punches, Spence's deeper inside position is perfect for landing counters. As his opponent opens up to throw, Spence will move deeper inside, pivoting to slide his back foot up and out. He then allows his opponents to move right past him as he angles safely off to the side. From this position, Spence can catch opponents with hard counters when they least expect them, or even intercept their punch as they throw. One reason this tactic is so powerful is that it gives Spence a clear path to his opponent's temple placing his rear hand close enough for hooks or uppercuts. But what Spence is really hoping for is for his opponent to rush in and crowd him, because this will put him in range to land his devastating liver blows. But many don't know that you can still effectively target the liver from the front as well. In other words, Spence will step inside to target an opponent's liver around their guard, and step outside to target their liver through their guard. But footwork is only the first step to Spence's positional dominance. Like most fighters, Spence will use his head and shoulders to muscle for position once he gets into close range. But like the great classic boxer Henry Armstrong, Spence expands on this concept by using wrestling to turn his opponents into his punches. That being said, these positional tactics would not be nearly so effective without Spence's wide array of guard manipulations, including frames, pins, vision disruptions, and traps. The most basic way that Spence manipulates an opponent's guard is to leave his jab extended, so that he could turn his opponent's head or shoulder. Once an opponent's vision is blocked, Spence will target the opponent's blind spot with his other hand. If a competitor is shelling up, Spence will simply pin their guard giving him one split second to fire off before they can readjust. But Spence can do far more with these guard tactics than simply block an opponent's vision. He can also pull their head into shots, or push it to disturb their balance. 
using the split second that their movement is disrupted to land even more punches. Spence will do the same with hooks, leading on opponents who duck under punches to stop them from regaining their posture. Or at times, he'll do the exact opposite, propping them up with his forearm or shoulder to expose their midsection. Spence will also just pull down an opponent's guard from time to time to create new openings. This is usually done off a jab and is too subtle to see in real time. This is more like a temporary weakening of an opponent's guard rather than a true hand trap, but it works well all the same. But Spence's most impressive quality is how he puts all of these principles together, using his footwork, wrestling, and guard manipulation all at once. For instance, Spence will lean into his forearm frames to steer opponents, pivoting away to superior angles to land shots. As his opponents are forced to readjust, Spence takes the opportunity to exploit their momentary weakness. Forcing an opponent to readjust while you're in position to punch essentially leaves them a second behind. Like a struggling musician who can't keep up with the rest of the band, Spence leaves his opponent struggling to catch up to his rhythm, and he takes advantage of this quick moment in time by landing knockout punches. What's truly astounding is the way that Spence is able to use all of these tactics in succession, flowing from one to the other in order to completely overwhelm opponents. Spence's mastery of positioning should be studied by southpaws who practice any form of martial arts or combat sports. From an entertainment standpoint, I can't wait to see if the future fights between Spence and his top rivals will end up being just as epic as the legendary fights between the four kings. You can check out my books on footwork, power, and defense, all linked below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.